Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Finland. It's very nice to be here. After the PISA 2000, Finland had, have been really interested in Finnish education. It is true that Finnish education system is a success story. During the past hundred years, we built up our country from a poverty to one of the world's welfare states. What have we done right? How do we educate our children? I will tell you our story, the story of Finnish education. Many Finns have visited your country, enjoyed your sunny climate and friendly people. But how many of you have visited Finland? Not so many, that's what I thought. Our climate is not the most charming one in the world. We have long, dark winters with a lot of snow and light summer nights with a lot of mosquitoes. We do have our forests and a lot of space and thousands of lakes, but in the end, we don't have natural resources. During the centuries, our geographical location between East and West have forced us to be involved in many wars. This has deepened the Finnish national identity and later the church and the school uh, emphasized the importance of our own language and own public education. This all has saved our personality. You have needed a lot of willpower, courage, resilience, just to survive in the Finnish northern conditions. We have a Finnish word, sisu, which describes all that kind of characters. Our history and the conditions we live in have made us fit to appreciate education and everything you can achieve by that. My mother tells me the story about his father, my grandfather. My grandfather and his family needed to leave their home after the Second World War when the eastern part of Finland was admitted to Russia. They actually had nothing when they settled down in their new home city. My grandfather said to my mother and all the children that the only thing he can give you is the possibility to study as much as you want to. And they all did and had their good education. You can see Finland's appreciation in several ways. For example, in city planning, here is a picture of my hometown. And there are two of its main streets through the city. What can we see there? There is an old school, which is nowadays art museum. When you go forward, there is an upper secondary school, and next to it, an upper school. When we walk through forward, we come to the university area where you find my school, University Teacher Practice School, as well. It is like an education production line in the city. It, in the end of it, you are a master or a doctor, whatever you want to be. In my mother's family, they had four girls and two boys. They all had equal opportunity to study. In a small country like Finland is, all the boys and girls were needed to build up the country. Uh, the question of gender, e gender equality is understood as a way to increase country's economy. Finland has been a forerunner in gender equality. 
Finnish women were the first to get the right to vote in 1906, and the first members in parliament were Finnish too. Partly thanks to the active generations in earlier women earlier generations, men's and women's level of the education is equal nowadays. And it is well known fact that the standard of a mother's education has the most impact on a child's school achievements. More than 90% of Finnish women go to work outside home. Therefore, we had a really good daycare system. It's a legal right to have an early childhood education. Nowadays, the question of equality is strongly visible in Finnish school education. Since Finland did the comprehensive school reform in 1970s, all the schooling has been free of charge and all streaming were abolished. The idea behind this is that all children need the same and equal education despite their background. We also see to it that it's important that every child achieves the goals in natural, national curriculum. For that we have a good special education and a law which ensures that a child needs all the support she or he needs to achieve the goals. We don't have any dropouts during the comprehensive education. And even after the comprehensive education, it has seemed important that you can always study further despite of your earlier studying path. Teachers are highly educated in Finland. All teachers have master's degree. The speciality, oh, there's some, okay. The speciality in Finnish education is our uh, teacher training system. Mm, yeah. Uh, which ensures that all students' teachers have high-class feedback from their lessons. The idea of guided practices is to support the professional growth from the beginning of the study till the end of it. We start from a firmly supported planning and implementation of the lessons and end up to be a colleague as a nearly independent professional. The Finnish education system gives great independency to a teacher. Teachers are independent experts who are trusted. The national curriculum gives the frame, framework for the, uh, the curriculum, but all cities write their own curriculum based on the national framework. Then, teachers are free to implement the curriculum in the way they see is best for their students. Teachers are trusted so much that we don't have any national testing system in Finland. Only in the upper secondary school we have the matriculation examinations. We don't have a system of teacher inspection either. The Finnish education, mm, okay. the Finnish system, hardworking people, appreciation for education, gender equality, and equal educational opportunities, and good teacher education too, have been factors arising in Finland to the top of the education and to the top of many industrial areas as well. Nokia was a long time the engine of the Finnish development. I think that it was only Nokia which made us Finnish to feel that we are as good as anybody else in the world, or 
Maybe it was the first world championship in ice hockey. Finnish society has always reacted fast on the changing global situations. After Nokia's success, society retrained people and retargeted higher education sector as well. Within some years, there has sprang up many small firms with a lot of growth potential. Good examples of that are the game firms like Rovio, Supercell, Red Lynx or Remedy. Games like Angry Birds, Class of Clans, Heyday, Alan Wake or Trials are all designed in Finland. Society's ongoing analysis on the same thing circumstances is seen on the accelerating pace of national curriculum re renewals. Since 1866, we have had eight national curriculum renewals, of which three have been in the latest 15 years. The latest process started 2012 and it will be introduced 2016. The idea of the curriculum renewal is to notice and react better to the changes on the operational environment. We have many concerns visible in the education area. Youth unemployment is increasing. Many young are in the danger of social explosion and, and that's why the decision makers have been forced to cut the finance in education. We have to pay more attention to the rapid changes in technology and social media because of what the quality and the amount of the information has changed. Worldwide, we need to be aware of climate change, pollution, poverty, and many other things. Things have awakened to the reality. The concern of the state of the society and the world is real. This is why the national curriculum renewal is a common project for the whole society and in its inhabitants. The process has many phases and in every phase different stakeholders are asked to give their opinion what is important to know and know how in the future. Education organizers, teachers, parents, pupils and different trained unions have been able to comment new drafts straight to the National Board of Education. Things think that these skills are important to have in the future. These elements, elements are important and essential for creative learning, which has defined to be one aim in the Finnish education in the future. The biggest change will be in the action culture. It is not about what to teach, but how to teach how to use all the possibilities what new technology is offering. In many cases, we teachers and educators are helplessly left behind introducing in new technology. To some extent, the teachers and the pupils' roles have switched places. Next autumn, I will be a fifth grade teacher. All the children in my class and in two collateral classes will have their own device to use. The idea of BIOD has been in use in math or in arts or any way when you need just to find some information. But now the school is offering a device for everyone to use. This has already been the case in our upper secondary school. 
Next autumn, we will have a great opportunity to try out different teaching methods like flipped classroom. But I also see risks in this kind of development. Already now, for some pupils, their smartphones have been too important. Phones are like cell food extensions. This picture was taken last February when our sixth graders had their school camp. We teachers decided to collect all the devices off for a night. And as a surprise for some pupils, it is still possible to get sleep without the phone. But the question is, what is important to learn and teach in the future? I would say that the most important thing is learn to learn. Because all the information needed is easily available. The idea of, of working hard to catch an aim is weird, a strange for young people. If you don't learn how to work for learning, there is no possibility to get a big picture and innovate something new. There are many problems in the future waiting to be solved globally. Therefore, we need creative thinking. Behind the creativity, creativity there is often talent. But more than talent, it is a question of inner motivation, willingness to practice, cry out over and over again, and tolerate failures. We have to remember to give time our children to mature if we want to educate creative individuals. The most important is to support the child's self-esteem and self-image. We have to believe and trust in our children. Like the one who was not so bright in his early years has said, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. The Finnish way of saying this would be, if a self-confident child learns how to learn and has inner motivation with resilience and coping with failures, a child is ready to meet the future. This was my story, the story of Finnish education, the story of Sisu. Thank you.